Hi, I'm Alistair. I've been working on a project recently that's involved a lot of dynamic lighting. So as I've had to be rummaging through my parts drawer for various programmable RGB LEDs, I thought I'd make this short video explaining some of the differences between them. So starting off with the WS2812, which is one of the most common LED types you'll encounter. It normally comes on a strip with LEDs spaced either 30, 60 or 144 LEDs per meter. Now you can cut this strip up across the copper contacts and then you can rejoin them to other strips. And you can also get them arranged in rings or square matrices like this. Uh, now here I've got a reel of SK6812 LED strip. This is very similar to the WS2812, except notice that it uses side-lit LEDs. The light is emitted at right angles to the strip, which means it's easier to bend and shape and inlay the strip into curved grooves. Uh, next I've got some uh, bullet pixels. And besides using a different form factor, these are 8mm like regular LEDs, these also use a different chip. So these are based on the WS2811 rather than the WS2812. And one way you can tell the difference is that the WS2811 is an external chip. You can actually uh, see it inside the housing there, whereas you can't see the controller chip on a WS2812 uh, since it's actually integrated into the LED housing itself. Now the other difference is that whereas the 2812 and the uh, SK6812 run at 5 volts, the WS2811 more commonly runs at 12 volts. Uh, although notice that you can also get 5 volt versions of it here. Uh, so this bag here is 12 volts and this is 5 volt versions and they look identical. So make sure you label what voltage they use. Now the advantage of powering a strip at, at 12 volts means that you can run more pixels over longer distances without a significant voltage drop which is crucial for larger installations with more pixels. They are, however, a little less power efficient. Uh, now over here, I've got some WS2815 LEDs, and these come in a form factor which is commonly referred to as uh, seeds or pebbles. Now, like the WS2811, these operate at 12 volts, but they come with an important difference, which is a backup data line. So this backup data allow, allows the WS2815 to bypass any failed LEDs in a string. If one LED goes out, the rest of the strip keeps working. So these make your lighting installation more reliable and robust. And you can also get WS2813 chips, which operate at 5 volts, like the WS2812, but with a backup data line, like the WS2815. Now one of the great things about all these LEDs is that they all use the same protocol, which means that you can easily chain strips together, even different types. So you could start with a WS2812B ring, and then you could connect it to a string of WS2811 bullet pixels, and then to the WS2815 seeds, all sharing the same data signal. You just need to make sure that each strip has the appropriate power supply for its voltage. So you can mix and match all these lights together and control them from a single controller. But there are some limitations, uh, namely timing issues and power supply. So starting with timing, the way that these LEDs work is that a controller, like an ESP32 or an Arduino, sends a packet of data representing all of the RGB values of all the LEDs in the strip. Now, a single pixel has red, green, and blue components. They each take up eight bits. So a single LED requires 24 bits of data. The controller sends all of that data to the first LED in the strip, and that LED strips off the first 24 bits, uses them to light up the correct color, and then it passes the remainder of the data down the line to the next LED. And this happens all the way down the strip. Each LED grabs the first 24 bits of data it receives, then passes on the remainder until it runs out. 
Now the speed at which this data is sent down the line is uh, 800 kilobits a second. So the more LEDs you add, the more data there is to send on, and also the more LEDs it has to be passed across before the controller sends the next packet of data. So as a general rule, uh, you can control up to around 500 pixels with an Arduino. You can go a bit higher with an ESP32, up to about 800 pixels before you start to notice delays or flickering. And that's the same with all of these LED types. There are other types of LEDs, such as uh, APA102, that have a separate clock and data line. And that means that they can typically run at faster speeds, but they're less common and also generally more expensive. Uh, now for the power supply. So each LED draws a certain amount of current. That's typically around 60 milliamps per pixel at full brightness uh, for a 5 volt LEDs. And that adds up. So controlling 100 LEDs would already require about 6 amp power supply. And if you're running hundreds or thousands of pixels, you'll need a beefy power supply. But it's not enough just to have one enormous power supply at one end. You'll need to inject power at multiple points along the strip to avoid voltage drop, which can cause dim or flickering LEDs. You'll notice on the back of uh, the matrix here, so I've got input here, but there is an additional power injection going in here. And this is true with a lot of these controllers as well. You'll see that you have um, the option for additional power injection each time you connect a new strip. Now, if you're using one of the 12 volt systems like the WS2811 or the 2815, voltage drop is less of a problem, but it's still important to calculate the total current you'll need. And in some cases, you still will need to use multiple power supplies to handle the load. Now, when it comes to control, I generally use the fast LED library, which is excellent, and lets you write code to control each LED in your strip exactly as you want, and easily program custom lighting effects that are synced to inputs received, etc. But if you don't want to write your own code, you can also use something called WLED, which is pre-built firmware that you just download onto an ESP8266 or ESP32, and that gives you a simple web interface to control your LEDs, or you can access it on a mobile app. It's very common in smart home setups if you just want to quickly choose from a preset list of effects or colour patterns. But what I've been working on most recently uses show control software, more common in stage productions or live performances. So I've been using software called QLC Plus to control my LED strips over ArtNet, alongside more traditional DMX stage lighting fixtures and effects like lasers and fog machines. So this is a little bit more complex, but it's super powerful if you really want to create some immersive theatre quality lighting control. And perhaps I'll explain more about that in some videos in the future, but hopefully that's given you a little overview of uh, some programmable LEDs you can use in your projects.